Alexander Hamilton wrote in Federalist Paper Number 78 that the judicial branch is the least dangerous branch because it has no influence over either the sword or the purse. In order to assess the legitimacy of this statement, we must first look into the various powers of the judiciary set up by a system of checks and balances, as well as the consequences of unfair judges and biased court decisions. Key Ideas Separation of Powers Checks and Balances Judicial Review Marbury v. Madison Separate but Equal Fair and Impartial Prior to the drafting of the Declaration of Independence, the colonies of America were subject to the tyrannical government under George III of Great Britain. After the Revolutionary War, the colonists who now sought for a weaker central government ratified the Articles of Confederation. Problems resulting from the economic depression and angry war veterans, however, led to a call for a stronger centralized government. In 1786, the colonists met in Philadelphia to revise the Articles. Instead, this constitutional convention led to the drafting of a new form of government, the U.S. Constitution. Wary of the effects of a strong government, the Anti-Federalists demanded that their individual rights be protected. To further prevent an overly powerful government, the Founding Fathers decided to implement a sharing of powers between the federal and state governments through federalism, as well as the separation of powers among the three branches within the national government. A system of checks and balances ensured that the three branches remained separate but equal. This does not refer to the Plessy versus Ferguson case. Rather, it means that theoretically all branches have equal power while remaining independent of one another. The Marbury versus Madison case gave the Supreme Court the power of judicial review. This prevents the legislative branch from passing unconstitutional laws arbitrarily. The checks and balances system also allows the judicial branch to impeach presidents. In order for the balance of powers to take effect, the judiciary needs to remain independent of the other two branches. It is also imperative that judges be fair and impartial. Otherwise, the government may become corrupt and one branch will wield more power over another. When Hamilton said that the judiciary had no influence over the sword, he meant that the president controls the military while Congress controls the U.S. Treasury or the purse. Overall, considering the powers granted to the judicial branch, Alexander Hamilton was right when he said that it was the least dangerous branch of government. The judiciary has the power to prevent or approve change, but has neither the power to execute nor make the laws. This became evident in Cherokee Nation v. Georgia, when Andrew Jackson proved the limitations of the Supreme Court in that regardless of what the judge says, only the president can enforce the laws.